weeks during this season of Lent, we as a faith community have been looking at the tough questions of our faith. Just what is the minimum that we need to believe or have to believe to call ourselves Christian or followers or disciples of Jesus Christ? We've established that there are many generous, kind, forgiving, loving, great, ethical people out there in the world in which we live, but that doesn't necessarily make them Christian. So we've been looking at what do we need to believe and what do we need to say or proclaim to be called Christians. And the myth or the misconception, if you will, that's out there that says that if you doubt or you ask questions, you are not a good Christian. That as followers of Jesus, that, that we're not to question those in authority, we're, we're to be sponges only, and whatever anyone tells us about Jesus, we're just supposed to take it in, I guess, if you will. But nothing can be farther from the truth. I think if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, he constantly and consistently welcomed questions. Every question that was proposed to him, he answered them with truth, with honesty, with poise, and with compassion. Never once did Jesus say, you shall not question God. You shall not question your faith. And I believe it's because of real relationship, a real intimate relationship with one in which that you are engaged, it causes or requires us to ask questions. Why? Because that's an indication or an indicator, if you will, that we're plugged in into the relationship. I mean, how was your day? Is anything wrong? What can I do today to, to make your day better? How can I help you? What do you need from me? I mean, when we are in a, a committed relationship, intimate relationship, we need to be asking questions. Not to be nosy, not to be controlling, but to be engaged. Because in those relationships, when one hurts, the other one should hurt also. When one wants to celebrate and feels joy, the other should want to celebrate and feel joy also. And when we do this, the relationship begins to grow and it begins to nurture and it shines when we ask questions. And the same holds true with our relationship with Jesus Christ. I mean, sometimes we get answers and clarity when we ask God questions. And sometimes we don't. So the question for today is, is there hope? Is there hope? You see, we recall the, the events of Monday Thursday and, and that night in the upper room as, as Jesus gathered all his followers and his loved ones. We recall the, the beating and the public humiliation. We recall that Jesus was nailed to the cross beside two thieves. We recall that he was crucified and put to death for something he did not do. And so we ask ourselves, is there any hope in any of this? We look around in our world. Sometimes we look around in our family or our community and we say honestly, I mean, is there any hope? And I know Cubs fans ask that all the time. <laughs> it may be new to Cardinal fans. So sorry, Truman. No one will hear. But in my walk of life, in my journey through life, one thing that I have learned that hope saves people's lives. I mean, hope saves people. Hope saves them spiritually. It saves them emotionally. It saves them relationally. It even saves them, saves them physically. And we all hope for different things. I mean, we hope for forgiveness. We hope for reconciliation. We hope for healing. We hope that our faith will Return. We hope that our, our finances will recover. We hope that the pain of grief will finally lessen a bit. And some of us hope that in our addiction will be overcome. Some of us hope that our marriage will be saved. Some of us hope for life beyond this one. We hope for the 
stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow, and the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And then, then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Now I have told you. We need to understand that little hope or no hope remain for all of the followers of Jesus on Good Friday and on Saturday. They saw their beloved Jesus betrayed. They saw him abandoned. They watched him be placed on trial. They watched him be mocked and beaten and crucified. They watched his abused, lifeless body being placed in a tomb. The disciples of Jesus Christ felt utterly devastated. You see, all hope was vanished. It was over. It was done. It was gained in. It was done. And all of Jesus' friends, followers, and family members hid, went and hid in their homes from the authorities because they were fearful of their own life as well. But on the third day, just as the prophets predicted, on Easter morning, God declared that death would not prevail and evil would not win. And early that morning, with just a few people, incredible news broke forth. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. And that news of Christ's resurrection from the grave gave Jesus' followers Hope for, for life. Hope for, for life after death. You see, the last word of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the last word as Christians, is not crucifixion, but resurrection. The last word of the gospel is not despair, it is hope. The resurrection of Jesus tells us that God is in the business of bringing life out of death. That God doesn't only bring life out of physical death, as important as that is, God brings life out of smaller deaths as well. God will bring life to, to the death of your dream. God will bring life to the death of a marriage. God can bring life to the death of a career. God can bring life to the death of good health and even the death of past mistakes. And the great Easter hope, the hope that God brings life out of death, gives us hope for living each and every day. You see, Christianity is falls and stands on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Any, anyone, anyone can believe moral principles. Anyone can have ethical teachings of Jesus. Anyone can believe in the tragedy surrounding his death. But you cannot call yourself Christian or a follower of Jesus if you do not believe in the resurrection and if you do not find hope in an empty Over, over 10 years of, of preaching every Sunday, because I have vowed not to early, and because some of you probably wouldn't understand me anyway, I don't use movie references. Because um, you would probably think, that's you got your taste in movies. <laughs>
start. Red decides to go to Mexico. And as he travels by bus, he's excited as a schoolboy of all of those around him. And Red speaks the final words of this movie. He says, I hope. Yes. Yeah. 